What's up guys? So uh, I just opened a Yabo and I uh, realized that my camera wasn't on. <laughs> I thought I had the button, but apparently I didn't. So anyway, I'm gonna redo this. Um, I got a nice little package with some cigars, a beautiful uh, Yojimbo, and a surprise in there. And I'm gonna read the letter to you right now. What's interesting, I mean, if you've read the title of the video, it's gonna be something along the lines of, you know, bad QC. Uh, it's really mostly about this. The video is to, to show and thank the person who sent me these nice gifts, but also pertaining to this Yojimbo, all right, from Spyderco. So it says, hey Jeff, I uh, hope this letter finds you well. I've been watching your videos since 2010 when I was in eighth grade. Here I am today, soon to graduate college. Uh, first off, congratulations on graduating college. Uh, you've been a huge inspiration in my life and I, sent, and I sent you a little something to show my appreciation. Inside there are a few things I thought you might enjoy and a knife that I'd like you to look at. Uh, for some odd reason, most of the Spyderco knives I buy come from factory with an uneven grind. The one inside is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Not as bad as some of the ones I've had in the past, but enough to irk me. Sad face. <laughs> Uh, I thought it'd be a cool idea if you could do a video on fixing it with one of your various sharpening systems. One of these days, I'd love to meet you in person. Until then, best wishes to you, Christina and Gus. Sincerely, Tyler Tran. All right, so first let's take a look at the knife and what he's talking about, and then I'll show you the wonderful gifts that he sent me. Um, but first, it's funny because I've had probably three, maybe even four Yojimbos in my day. And every time I get one in hand, I'm extremely conscious of a problem that I have with them and that is with the compression lock, all right? The lock works great. However, when I open this knife, like clockwork, every single time, you see where my pointer finger is? It's just resting on the knife like I would any other knife. But when I open this, ow, the compression lock comes over and grabs the fat on my finger. All right, now, if you are a skinny person or have very small fingers, maybe that's not an issue for you, uh, but it's just been something that's always happened with the Yojimbo specifically. I've used the compression lock in other models and haven't really experienced that before. But this particular knife, I don't know why. It's just location, I guess. I mean, when I go to use this thumb stud, you can see my pointer finger wraps right around that cutout here, all right? So if you're not familiar with the compression lock, my finger, <laughs> finger, I don't know why I said it like that. My finger would be resting right here, okay? And obviously as it opens, it clicks over and the fat on my finger, which is, it's probably too much fat right now, uh, gets stuck right in there. It's, it pinches, it feels like a little like needle prick or something. All right, so if I'm not conscious of it when I'm opening this knife, ow. Um, yeah, but anyway. So just an issue if you happen to be a bigger dude or I don't know, even if, you, even if you're a normal build, uh, that might be an issue for you. So right down in the comments, right off the bat, Spyderco, Yojimbo, have you ever had one? And if you did, was that ever an issue for you? But if you notice, I mean, naturally, when I, I literally first opened this package, I grabbed them like, oh, it's awesome. I didn't even read the note yet. I just wanted to open it. And I purposely just put my finger like way out here. So he's talking about uneven grinds. And this is very slight. And again, this is for something, or for some people you might go, what? That looks fine. But if you are a perfectionist and you are, you know, um, focusing on more the details, especially in, you know, more expensive knives, not a super cheap knife by any means. Um, this is just something that may bug you. So I get the light to reflect on the grind here. Now the presentation side or right side, how I, I would call this the presentation side, the side that the uh, logo is on, especially towards the tip here, you can see how it's a little bit on the thin side. All right, this is probably a steeper angle. And if you don't know, Spyderco sharpens at 30 degrees, at least for many, many years. I, I'm assuming they still do that. I don't know if they do it on every single model, but a lot of people say like, oh, you know, Spyderco feels sharper than any other knife. Well, the, the industry standard is at like a 40 degree inclusive angle, meaning that it's 20 degrees on each side, whereas Spyderco does 15 on each side. So it's literally, you know, a shallower grind, you know, making it a sharper edge or a thinner edge. That, it doesn't look quite what their standard is. If I flip it over, the other side looks wider. That looks like the 15 degrees, you know, and it's very hard to tell just from looks, but that is definitely a little bit wider. It's not dramatic. He's saying that there are worse examples. I haven't really seen anything super bad as far as Spyderco goes. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Just the hundreds of Spydercos that I've had, I just either didn't take note of it, didn't notice it, or they just were fine. But I can see what he's saying here. Again, let me try to get the light to 
reflect exactly on it. So again, we're looking at the very edge here, okay, what looks to be white or what's shiny right now compared to what's shiny right now. See how it's a lot wider? So that would mean that it's a, you know, a lower angle. So the front side might be like this, only up here, and the back side is a little bit lower. So yeah, I mean, most people would never even notice that, honestly. Uh, but if you're really into knives and you pay a good penny for these things and you critique them, you know, Spyderco is a very good knife company. I think a lot of people would agree with that, whether you like their designs or not. The only thing people really say negative is, ooh, they're ugly, you know? And speaking of, I am getting another Spyderco, hopefully, fingers crossed, that uh, is super ugly. But, um, but yeah, it's just, it is kind of what it is. So, <laughs> the, uh, the Yojimbo. I will, uh, I'll certainly hook you up this time and fix this up. I mean, thank you very much for the gifts. It was very nice of you. I do appreciate it. And I appreciate you watching, you know, for so long. We'll see about doing a video on it, but right off the bat, I'm going to use the Edge Pro Apex. I'm going to retape it and everything so I don't scratch your knife up since this is not mine. Uh, I'll make sure you know, to keep it looking how it does now, only I'm just going to do uh, both sides evenly for you. And I'll probably stick to the 15 degrees that it's supposed to be or, or is close to. All right, so, I mean, very straightforward. I've done multiple videos on the Edge Pro Apex, so I don't think it'd be super interesting for people to watch. I mean, people who are interested in that probably already saw the other videos anyway, but who knows, but that's, that's what I'll do. So um, if you can contact me on uh, Instagram, uh, just so that I have your information as well. So when I'm done, I can ship this back to you. That would be awesome. So now I want to show you what he sent me, which is extremely nice. These are very, very nice cigars. High quality stuff right here. We have a Padron. This one is a 1926 Siri. Beautiful cigar. Big fan. I'm a big fan of most Padrones, but the 64 and the 26 are... Probably my favorite. I like the 64 a little bit more, uh, but the 26 is a seriously nice cigar. I mean, if you're not into cigars, if you walk into a smoke shop, this might be $25, $28, something around there. It's not, it's not a cheap cigar by any means. So, I mean, it's really nice. Um, also, an uh, Oliva V. I actually have one of these in my human order that's about an, a year old or so. I'm not sure exactly when this one was purchased. Um, but this, I read, was an awesome, awesome cigar. I was very excited to try it. It's been aging ever since. And he also sent me three different Avos, which I've not had any of these, I do not believe, as far as I can remember, but beautiful cigars. Very nice taste, very awesome selection. All right, so lastly, uh, this was very, very special, a very cool surprise. I opened the knife first, then I opened the cigars, then I read the letter before I opened this. It felt like there was a, a book in here. I'm like, okay, cool book, but I wanted to keep it a surprise. I wanted to see if it said it in the letter. And it's kind of funny because I happened to get this book in the mail today. This is a trade I did, all right? I saw this originally on eBay when I was looking for battle song stuff. And I thought, oh, I got to get this book. I mean, I love all kinds of knife-related books, any kind of knife defense, knife combat, knife fighting. Uh, and this one happened to feature a Spyderco uh, Spiderfly right on the cover. So I'm like, oh, awesome, I gotta get it. This is actually a really, really cool book. I just kind of flipped through it, I didn't read anything yet. Ooh, there was a picture of uh, a very younger version of Lynn Thompson, the president of Cold Steel. Um, I think I saw, flipping through, some Ernie Emerson in here. Basically referencing it, there's Ernie right there. Um, of Emerson Knives, if you don't know. Anyway, really cool book on defensive techniques and stuff. But it's just kind of, you know, funny that I happen to get that book in the mail today and this surprise book. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen me post a picture of this book because I've been kind of collecting Balasong books specifically. I want to own every Balasong book there is. And I have a lot of them. Um, there's only a couple out there that I don't have, and this was one of them. So when I opened this, I was really, really excited to see this. All right, now, the reason I posted a picture on Instagram originally is because I saw this on Amazon and I want to say it was like $700 or something crazy. Because the person listing it, you can list it for whatever you want. And it's a, it's a rare book. I mean, this, when this came out, there wasn't a bunch of people buying them. You know, to find one, especially this one's in awesome condition. Um, you know, it's not going to be at your bookstore. It's going to be very hard to find. You know, you're not going to find it randomly at a garage sale or something. You have to go to an online bookstore or something. I'm assuming this person probably did that. 
I don't know if they already had, you can tell me, you know who you are. Uh, you can send me a message anyway, because I wanted to talk to you about some stuff, but uh, especially your knife here. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm assuming they picked that up. I doubt they already had this book, but either way, super, super cool. It's just an awesome reference. And this one has a ton of different um, referencing or reference material for older battle songs. Tons of pictures showing old designs. I have one of those as well. You know, Scandinavian style battle song. If you watch my old collection video, just some really, really cool stuff in here. You know, it's not, it's not a super long book, but I just, I love seeing some of the older stuff. Here's a big old FHM, very common style for the big old swords too. Uh, oh my God, I have one of these as well. Or a similar version, not that exact one, but a very similar one. It's just awesome. I, didn't, I only flipped to this. I didn't read it through yet, but it shows a lot of the older models. Just really cool. So as far as, uh, you know, being surprised, I was totally shocked when I saw this. Um, I did have a couple of people when I posted that it was on Amazon for like 700 bucks or 500 bucks, whatever it happened to be, some ridiculous amount. Um, I had a couple people tell me that they found it somewhere else for like 30 or 40 bucks. You know, either way, they're not cheap. It's not a $10 book, you know? So um, regardless of whether he already owned it, wanted to give it to me, or whether he found it somewhere cheap and bought it, uh, just huge thank you. It was a really, really nice surprise. So I have some, some reading to do, which is very cool, and some work to do. And I will probably, maybe I'll smoke one of these Avos while I'm uh, you know, doing this sharpening for him. So before I actually touch this, I, want, I do want to talk to you. Uh, again, you know who you are, so you watch the videos. If you can send me a message on Instagram, we'll talk about this a little bit more uh, as far as like maybe what grit you want, what kind of finish, things like that. But anyway, in the meantime, if you guys collect knife-related books, Heck, if you collect any type of books, let me know down below. I'd be curious. I collect a lot of books. Uh, most of you guys know that. I love reading, specifically hobby books, knife, but any, all my hobbies, knives, zippos, uh, different types of lighters, fireworks. I mean, if I'm into it, I have a slew of books on the subject. But anyway, uh, most of you guys don't care about my books. So thanks for watching. <laughs> um, and uh, I hope you guys have an awesome day. I'll see you soon. And by the way, not only tell me about books down in the comments, but let me know if you have had spider codes that had, you know, messed up grinds. Just seems really off to me. I don't see it very often. I have seen it like in this particular case where it's slightly off, but it didn't really bother me that much. Um, let me know. Have you ever gotten a spider code that was just jacked up? And if so, what was the problem with it? So anyway, I'm really going to go now. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Take care, guys.